Hi, it's Carrie. <clears throat> Pardon me. I haven't spoken at all yet today, so that came out a little funny. I'm back with another video. And I'm filming on my laptop today because I wanted to make a little bit longer of a video. Apparently my phone, I have a Galaxy S6 and it'll limit the time that you can record and I have a feeling this video is going to go longer than that. So I wanted to record on my computer. Um, I saw a video, just a very simple video idea. I saw a video posted, somebody put the top 10 movies that they could just watch over and over and over again. I'm like, well, I love movies. I could easily make that video. So I did. I went and I pulled out of my DVD collection. I do have all of these on DVD, and there's probably a few movies that I'm forgetting just because I don't actually own them that would be considered my favorites. But of the ones that I own, I have here a collection of, it's, I've gone back and forth, and these are the ones that are never, ever, 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 ever going to leave my collection. I am going to hang on to these. These are my all-time favorite, and I can watch them over and over and over again, because there's about two of each genre <laughs> in here. Um, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 18 movies that, if these are the only movies that I could ever watch ever again, I will be satisfied. <laughs> so let's get started with this list. My first movie, these are alphabetical order just because that's how I pulled them out of the rack. So they're not necessarily in order of favorite. Uh, my first movie is Becoming Jane. And this is with Anne Hathaway and James McAvoy. And it, sh it tells the story of Jane Austen and how she began writing her most famous, arguably her most famous novel, Pride and Prejudice, which at the time was called something different. I should know what it is as an English major, but I can't think of what it, what the original title was at this point. Uh, but it tells her story, Jane Austen's story, of falling in love with this man and not being able to have him. And her coming-of-age story and how that affected her writing. I think it's just a beautiful movie. And at the beginning, I had a hard time seeing Anne Hathaway as Jane, but... There was a certain point in the movie, a certain line of dialogue, her acting, it just it flipped in my mind, and I'm like, oh, that's that's Jane. <laughs> so this is a really beautiful movie. I do love it a lot. Movie number two is a it's not a romantic comedy. It's a it's a family drama. It's because I said so with a star-studded cast. Namely Diane Keaton and Mandy Moore. Um, there's also Lauren Graham is in here, Piper Parabo is in here, they play the sisters, uh, but it's basically a mother-daughter comedy, and just the humor, the acting is spot on, it's so funny, and it's so, I think, true to the relationship between a mother and daughter, because they have like a royally big blowout over who the daughter is dating, and just the fact that they do have this big fight, and you think that they're not going to get to be friends again, they're not going to care for each other but their mother daughter so they do care about each other and the little quirks in the movie like how they continually reorganize the way her furniture is in her house it's just it's so cool I love it. it's so charming and just adorable I love it a lot uh, movie number three is an animated movie a Disney movie and that is Big Hero 6 and I don't know what it is about this movie but it is so cute it is so funny. It is so unique, original. I love it. I love the animation. I love the story. I love the music. Okay, the one song when they're all, <clears throat> all of the, the six of them, because that, that took me a while to figure out too why the movie was called Big Hero 6. Well, at the end of it, these six people have come together. These two have come together and be two of the six like crime fighters, superheroes. <laughs> um, but the, the part of the movie where they're all getting their uniforms it's the song called Immortals. I love that song. <laughs> um, but basically, his name is Hero, and this is Baymax. And if, I don't know if you've seen that face everywhere. Um, it, it's a Disney, famous Disney character, obviously. You've seen it before. Um, his brother dies in a tragic accident, and Baymax was his brother's project that he was working on, and he originally didn't have any intention of working with Baymax, just leaving him to sit in his little box, but he came out of his box one day as an accident, and 
they form this friendship and they're trying to solve a mystery and it's just it's such a unique story i love it it's so good um movie number four most of you have probably not heard of this one it is an old romantic comedy 1977 this was originally a vhs tape that my mom had that she found because she knew she loved the movie with richard dreyfus and marcia mason it is the goodbye girl and it just it pulls at the heartstrings it is so funny it is so heartwarming i love it i love it so much she is a woman who was just broken up with her actor hus or her actor boyfriend he decided that he was just going to dump her and her daughter go off and make this movie somewhere and we find out that the guy she was dating is actually married and he hasn't left her his wife yet and he is a struggling actor who was told by this crap boyfriend that dumped her that he could rent out the apartment because it's not in her name. And so basically this boyfriend that she had is kicking her out on the street with her and her, her, and her daughter out on the street because they don't own this apartment. They're not paying for it. And the crap boyfriend told this guy that he could rent the place. So now he doesn't have a place to stay. She's not leaving. And they decide between the two of them that they're going to cohabitate in this apartment. They're going to get along. He meditates in the nude and eats weird vitamin enriched food <laughs> out of these cereal bowls. And she's just sarcastic and hilarious. And their, their romantic like coming together and how they deal with each other is just so good. So classic. I love it. And it's it's a different style of humor than you might get now today that I just, I really appreciate it. I'm really glad that my mom made me watch that when I was younger. <laughs> Another romantic comedy, this one more recent, um, is The Lake House with Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves. And I just recently rewatched this, like in the last two weeks, and I was just reminded of how powerful of a romantic story it is, how beautiful the story is. And I don't know if it's based on a book. I think it might be. Maybe not. But it takes place over uh, like a two-year time period. Now, it, 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 has, it does take longer than that for the whole movie to take place, obviously. But she is living two years after him when they meet. And they communicate through this mailbox that's on the property of the lake house that they've both lived in. She lived in it in 2006, and he lived in it in 2004. And they try to meet in her time, but it doesn't work out. Something happened, and they're trying to make this relationship work because they really click. They really connect. It is such a beautiful movie. Very simple concept, too. Like, not, not even a simple concept, but just like a simple relationship between them, and they're trying to make it work over a, a time period of two years. <laughs> it's just... It's fascinating. I love it. Um, movie number six. This is actually a sports movie, which you might not expect because the rest of them have been like comedies, romantic comedies. I don't know what it is about this movie. I love it. It makes me laugh every single time I watch it. That is The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. And I know there's an original. I know the original was with Burt Reynolds and this is a remake. I don't care. I love this movie. This movie just makes me feel so good. <laughs> it's a an underdog story. I mean, the, the, he is arrested, sent to prison, and he meets up with these other guys in the prison who are just really hating where they're at. And because he was a quarterback out in the real world, he decides to form a football team and decides to motivate the other prisoners to join the team by saying that they can beat up on the guards because the game is prisoners versus guards and it's just such a feel-good kick-ass movie and I love the soundtrack because Nelly is in the movie where is he Nelly he's in the movie and he does some of the songs for it and it's just it's such a good good movie <laughs> I don't know how much else I could say about it still like a down in the dirt funny laugh out loud movie I love it Another animated movie. This one is not, not as well known as some other like Disney animated movies. This is actually a DreamWorks animated. This is Megamind. And it is Will Ferrell, Tina Fey, 
and uh, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. Those are the four main voices. And the fish, who is the fish? Um, David Cross. Um, so very famous voices in this movie. But basically, he is from, these two both have crash landed on Earth from other planets, other dimensions, wherever they're coming from. They're both out of this world. And because they crash land in the same place, they butt heads because one has far superior powers to the other, you know, physical powers versus mental powers. And they butt heads. He becomes the hero of the town and he becomes this sort of villain. And they fight against each other. Their back and forth banter is hilarious. And the story takes place when the hero suddenly is gone. And what does bad do when suddenly there's no good to oppose it? And I think it's just a really funny story. I think Will Ferrell sells the whole thing. The main character is great. I love the humor. I love the animation. It was just such a feel-good movie. Um, another movie, this is more of a family movie. All ages could watch this. I think it is rated G. I don't even see where it's rated. PG. Um, but it is Nim's Island. The case is actually blue. Um, but this is more, definitely more of a family-friendly movie. Um, these two, father and daughter, live on an island. Um, he is a research, he's a, a scientist. He studies plankton and sea life, and she lives on the island with him. Um, her mother passed away. She went missing during a voyage. Um, they believe she got eaten by a whale or something happened in the boat. She disappeared and she's not with them anymore. She died. And it's just the two of them living on the island. Well, the one day he goes out on an adventure looking for plankton um, and he runs into a storm and he's lost at sea and she's trying to figure out how to survive without him. And this one book series that she reads, she gets the books delivered to her by airmail. It's her favorite author, Alex Rover, and she begins writing this author saying, hey, can you help me? Because, because she's a child, she doesn't understand that the author is not the same as the main character in the book. She writes the author, whose name is Alex Rover, and turns out Alex Rover is not this big buff guy that she thinks it is. It's actually this agoraphobic woman who will not leave her apartment, who will only eat Progresso soup, and will, like, buy out all of the hand sanitizer <laughs> that is in the store. Her character is hilarious. But basically, this scared-to-death woman decides that the only way she can live with herself is if she goes out into the middle of the South Pacific, I think that's where the island is, to help this little girl. It's just this really great adventure story. I love it so much. I don't know if it's on Netflix or not, but I actually have read the audiobook as well. The audiobook's only a couple hours long, two hours long or something like that. Such a great story. Such a good feel-good story. Next one most people have probably heard of. This is an incredibly long movie. How long is this? 141 minutes. Okay, so maybe not as long as I thought it was. But it's like two, hour, two hours, two and a half hours. Phantom of the Opera, a very famous musical. Love the music in this. It just sweeps over you. It, like, it just stays in your mind. And I cannot say enough about this movie. When I was in high school, I was in the band, played the flute, and the one year in concert, we did a medley of Phantom of the Opera songs. It was just overwhelmingly beautiful. I love the music from this movie. Um, obviously, it is a stage production. That's how, I think that's how it started. It actually is a book, too. I've read the book. The book is way different than the play, the musical. I prefer the musical. But I believe it started as a stage production and then was adapted to film. But it is such a beautiful piece. Um, I'm not going to explain what it's about, obviously. Everybody knows what it's about. But it's, it's very powerful, very beautiful music. And it's one of those that it can be hard to sit and watch the whole thing all at once. Like I said, it's two, hour, two and a half hours long, but it is still very good. You get to the end of it and you're just like, oh. That was such a good movie. <laughs> Alright, this next one was actually in the other lady's list as well, the lady whose video I watched. Top 10 movies she could watch over and over again. 
and that is Pride and Prejudice, the version with Kira Knightley. Uh, there's probably other versions as well. Obviously, it's a very famous story. Just the one thing that stood out to me is the dialogue. Every time I watch this movie, I've seen this probably a dozen times, more than any other movie in this list. This is the one that I've seen the most, I think, of all of them. And it's one of those where you listen to the dialogue and you're following the story and just every time you watch it, you understand more of what they're saying, what the social context is, and what the characters are going through. It's such a visually beautiful movie. The setting, the scenery, the colors, it's just perfect. I love it. <laughs> and I was an English major, so I do appreciate the literary context of this film. They try to stay very true to the text that was in the book, um, and I think they do a very good job of it. Obviously, everyone knows the story of that as well, so I'm not going to explain the story. <laughs> This next one is actually a relatively new edition. Maybe not. I don't remember what year this came out. 2014. So it is very recent. It is the movie Saving Mr. Banks. It is how Mary Poppins became to be produced, created by Disney. It's the process that Walt Disney had to go through to obtain the rights to make the film Mary Poppins. Um, and this is Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson, and it's talking about she is the author, she portrays the author of Mary Poppins and how important the story is to her, and he portrays Walt Disney and what the story of Mary Poppins means to him. And it's a lot of back and forth, you see her backstory of what she went through creating the character, what the character means and what the purpose of Mary Poppins is, which is actually the title of the film. Come to the end of it. She goes, you think Mary Poppins is there to save the children? No, she's there to save Mr. Banks. And it's about her, the relationship between her and her father is a big part of the story. And it's just, I love being able to see, because this takes place, I don't remember what year, what time period this takes place. It doesn't say on the back. But when Disney was first becoming a big thing, and it shows old-time Disney, I don't know, architecture, old-time Disney sort of landscaping, and like what the parks might have looked like at the time, what the general feel of the area was. I just love that his historical Disney. I mean, Disneyland, obviously, out in California. It's just such a unique historical kind of movie. And I love the acting. It's so good. Next movie. Also love the acting. And this is entirely due to the actors. <laughs> um, this is Secondhand Lions. A good family movie. A good coming of age, growing up kind of a movie. This young boy has a mother who doesn't really care about him. She likes to think she does. She thinks she's a very caring person. Very maternal. But she goes off with her boyfriend who beats the crap out of her and only wants money and he she she dumps her son off to live with these two who are related to her in some way I don't know if they're like distant great uncles or something like that rumor is they have a whole bunch of money stashed away somewhere and her thought is that if she sends her son to live with them they will eventually put him into the will and give all the money to him so that she can get the money um, but how this boy just interacts with his two great uncles, I think is what they are. Just these two are such great characters. I mean, you learn his backstory, you learn a little bit of his backstory, and how this boy affects the both of them, and how he convinces them that, hey, if you guys do have money, I mean, you have all of this stuff saved up, they live on this really crap farm in the middle of nowhere, and they don't spend money on anything that's not necessary. He said, well, why don't you start spending your money with this money that you have saved up? Not necessarily these hundreds of millions or whatever that they have squirreled away somewhere, but just their, their regular savings. Like, why don't you just spend it on something fun? They end up buying a lion, which is where the move, the title comes from, Secondhand Lions. I think he's from a circus or something like that. Um, they buy all these different animals. They buy fancy guns, they buy a plane at one point, 
it's a really unique, really fun family story. And I don't know if you've seen on Facebook recently, somebody reposted this, the fight scene between him, the one brother, or the one uncle, and these young punks in a bar. <laughs> it's like, well, there's only four of them, or whatever it was, and just teaching them how to be a man. <laughs> it's such a good, such a feel-good family movie. I love it. Another romantic comedy with Diane Keaton and Jack Nicholson, Something's Gotta Give. This is a little bit older. And by that I mean the characters aren't in their 20s or 30s. These guys are in like their upper 50s and 60s. Like, they're, they know more of what they're looking for. The humor is a bit different. And they meet because her daughter is dating him at the beginning of the movie. And you look at that and go, really? <laughs> really? You wanted to date that guy? Okay. But he's the one that's pursuing the younger women. And over the course of the movie he realizes that it's not necessarily going to stop him from being attracted to someone who's older and their connection comes through and because they're both such great actors I just I think this movie works really well I love it so much and it's so funny <laughs> like so hilarious because these two are just amazing actors such a great romantic comedy Another animated movie. This one is actually, is it? Oh, it is a Disney movie. It is a Hayao Miyazaki movie, Spirited Away. I think I might have rented this from the library at one point, which was the first time that I ever saw it when I was younger. It is a movie that I've grown up with. It is so unique, so out of the box, crazy. Like, it takes place in a bathhouse. And at the beginning of the movie, this girl is separated from her parents. They get turned around, they get lost when they're trying to find their new house, and they end up at this abandoned fairground or abandoned theme park. And the parents stop at this one food food cart, food stand, whatever. They start eating, and they're just, they're, hey, you gotta try this. Come over here, you gotta try the food. And she's like, no, I don't want to. And she wanders away and starts, you know, seeing what the different, what the different parts of the theme park look like. And she gets scared. She goes running back to her parents, and here they've been turned into pigs. And um, she goes running. She's like, okay, well, that's, that must not be them. They must be back at the car. So she goes running back to where the car is, finds out that the entrance to this place has been flooded with water, and she can't get back to where it was before. So now she's stuck in this theme park, and it turns out it is the spirit world. It is uh, a bathhouse for the spirit world, and it sounds really weird. Trust me, it looks really weird too, but it is such a good look, such a good story, such a unique story. Like, who the hell thought of this? This is so good. The different characters, the different situations that she's put in, it's very episodic throughout the entire movie. She goes through different, different challenges, different stories. It's such a good kids movie. <laughs> I love this one. Um, a good, I don't even know what to call this, adventure story, Stardust. It's based on a book by Neil Gaiman, um, which actually, I don't think I've ever actually read the book, but a very good adventure story. These are the two main characters. Um, it's about a star falling from the sky. This boy, he's so lovesick over this love interest in the town that he decides he's going to go out and get the star for his girl just to prove that he's worthy of her even though she's this snob and doesn't really care about him. So he goes out, he tries to find the star, and he finds this woman and come to find out she is the star. She is the star that fell out of the sky. And he goes on an adventure with her because she is being... she... Because she is the star, he determines that he's still going to take her back and give her to his beloved. Because, okay, why wouldn't you, like, slavery, why wouldn't you do that? And come to find out, the star is sought after by the witches in the kingdom. This family of three witches, of which Michelle Pfeiffer is the main one. Um, Claire Danes plays the star. And Robert De Niro plays a pirate who helps them in their journey 
to get back to his mainland. It takes place um, in kind of a, obviously, a mythical kingdom. There's a wall between the real world and the world of fairy, and he's trying, he had to cross the wall to get into the world of fairy to find her, and now he's trying to bring her back into the world of man, or the real world. And it's just this really great adventure story. I love the music. The music is actually very similar to, like, Lord of the Rings. Because I remember listening to one song, and this chord progression is almost exactly the same. I'm like, did they realize they did that? So funny. Like, okay, not only is Robert De Niro a pirate, he is a gay pirate. And in one scene, he's got rouge on his cheeks, and he's dancing around with a petticoat. (laughs) Like, I don't know how... I don't know why he decided to do that role, because traditionally he's a rather serious actor. (laughs) But I'm really glad that he did, because his character's awesome, and the story is just great. I love it. All right, three more movies to go. I'm running out of time. i got to leave soon. (laughs) This one is more recent. Most people know what it's about. Suicide Squad. I officially love this movie. I love the action. I love the characters, although there are quite a few characters in this movie. I wish they would have been introduced a little more sympathetically into the story. There's a lot of action, a lot of stuff going on in here, but it's great. I love the acting. Thank you for making this action movie. I love it so much. (laughs) It's, It's so funny. It's so good. I love it. Go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. This animated movie... Another Disney animated movie, Tinkerbell, (laughs) which will come as a surprise because it's, I mean, it's such a kid's movie, such a gentle, you know, feel good, charming movie. And that's what I love about it. I love that it's so pure. It's so, I mean, there's nothing really negative in it. I mean, there's different little parts of the story, you know, something bad goes wrong and how do they fix it? It's just such a cute movie. I own about five or six of the Tinkerbell movies, and they're just, they make you feel good. They make you feel young. They make you feel like anything is possible, and I think that's probably what they were going for, so they, I think they succeeded in that, and it's just, I'd love to go back to movies like this, just you know, feeling a little low. I'm like, oh yeah, there's beautiful things like this out in the world. <laughs> and the very last movie, which if I had to pick... Of all of the movies that I have talked about, if I had to pick absolutely one favorite of all-time movie, this very last one would be it. And that is V for Vendetta, which is a surprising choice, I think. I don't know if many people would actually pick this as a favorite movie, but I gotta tell you, this one is my favorite. This is one that I could watch over and over and over and over and over again. And similar to Pride and Prejudice, every time I watch it, I find something, I hear something, I see something just a little bit differently than I did the time before. I feel like I understand more of a story. Basically, it is a uh, apocalyptic, maybe not apocalyptic, maybe that's not the right word for it. Basically, the government has taken over Britain, or the UK, that's where this takes place, and has decided that the public can only see certain things, can only hear certain things. They monitor what everybody watches, what everybody listens to. Um, they monitor the conversations that people are having. It's I think it's loosely based on the nineteen, the book nineteen eighty four, uh, by George Orwell. I believe that's the author. If I totally messed that up, I apologize. Um, but it is a. It is a country completely owned and governed by this corrupt government. And it's this one man, his name is V in the movie, because we don't ever find out much of his true identity, where he came from. He decides, or he declares that his true identity as a singular person is not important. He represents an idea. He represents this battle against oppression, against the government, against anybody who would silence the individual voice. Um, So he becomes this figurehead for this movement against the government, and she is caught up in this sort of controversy, this sort of battle against the government. She is taken under his wing because her family, in the past they were part of an opposition, and he knows that once her face is associated with his face, he wears a Guy Fox mask, 
Um, as soon as they become associated with each other, she is in danger, and he can't leave her alone. So he decides to take her to his underground bunker, um, protect her, teach her kind of what his motivations are, and she becomes sympathetic to the cause. She understands why he's doing what he's doing, and just the backstory of the government, and just, I don't know. It sounds really odd to say that this is my favorite movie, but this is my all-time favorite movie. <laughs> I could watch this over and over and over again, but this is one of those movies that I, if I'm going to watch it, if I know that I want to watch it, I need to sit down, avoid all distraction, turn my phone off, do whatever, because I need to be focused on it for the entirety of the movie. I think it's just over two hours. 132 minutes, yeah, so just over two hours. I need to be focused on it because it's part of the emotional journey of this movie. Your mind has to stay in the puzzle. It has to stay in the movie in order to get the full emotional effect of it. I love it so much. <laughs> I could I could talk about this movie all day long, but I won't. So yeah, that is my all-time favorites, all-time favorite movie collections. Like I said, none of those, none of those are ever leaving my collection, my movie collection, which is extensive. I mean, there's a whole bunch out there in my movie stacks that I have not talked about, um, which are also very good movies, but I was looking for these favorites and I'm looking down the list and I only picked out ones where my brain went, that's my favorite movie, <laughs> but that is such an amazing movie. There were others that I had picked out as well, and then when I was looking through the list, I decided that I could live without the other ones. These ones I don't think I could live without. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to make a little more fun movie, a little more exciting movie for all of you out there who are interested in movies as well. I think maybe you can relate. Let me know if you have some favorite movies, if maybe there's some that are in this list as well, or if you have others that are favorites that maybe I should look into that I need to consider my favorites. Maybe I already own them and they just didn't make my cut. I don't know. Um, but I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.